Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty fun stuff to go and talk about. Number one, and probably the biggest thing, is we do have a pretty good confirmed PlayStation 5 restock and going on tomorrow. So I'm going to cover that really quickly. And then as well, we have a very, very in-depth kind of talk over here from Herman Holst, where if you guys may or may not know, probably one of the very, very good higher-ups when it comes to the whole PlayStation ecosystem. Now, typically, whenever we get to see these types of interviews and talks, they yeah, have a good chance to kind of go and show the scope of what's coming next, what they want to work on, what they're focusing on, what issues they have and all that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Herman Holst too because he's been in quite a few of my different videos and is a pretty big politicized uh, PlayStation member. So a lot of cool things to go talk about, a lot of cool things to go bring on up. We'll talk about the restock stuff first and then the interview stuff right after. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. Amazon links down below for the PS5, you know, all the good stuff out there, all the signups and all that. We do have the Twitter and Twitch stream giveaway, all that good stuff. And well, let's just go dive into this actual video itself. So very first and foremost, let's go and cover up the now confirmed restock. So we did go have some rumors from earlier on today, and this actually now has been apparently confirmed. So in case any of you guys want to go and check your emails for this, we'll probably remind you guys tomorrow morning in like the day-to-day -day video. But there is now exclusive access on October 5th, 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So that is as per usual, 11 a.m. Pacific, 12 o'clock Mountain, 1 o'clock Central, 2 o'clock EST. And this is all while supplies last, subject to availability. And if you guys want to. If you guys, this is where you guys should have signed up for the PlayStation Direct as of already. You go check your email, your spam, promotions folder, or whatever it may be. If you have this email, it has the click unique link to enter the event. You obviously go and press access event whenever the actual timestamp goes. And then at least for these, there is usually a queue system because this is for the individual email invites. And then as you guys go through this, then you ideally have a chance to go buy out any console you want. Now, the, for the last few drops, they've done all five, I think, four or five consoles. The Horizon bundles on both the disc and digital, normal consoles for the disc and digital, and then as well, we do have that new Mono Warfare bundle. So we'll see if they try to promote all five of those or not. But typically, we've also been seeing the email invites, and then whatever that's all good and golden, then it typically will go into a uh, public queue with leftover stock. Stock is not selling out as as quickly, thank God. <laughs> thank God. We'll see how it comes up for the holiday season. But as I've mentioned, Stock is usually at least a little bit more on the chiller side or relaxing side, so at least I do approve of that. So, good stuff, and if you guys want to go check your emails, you guys should hopefully be a part and part of it if you guys would like. If you guys have not done so, basically go and Google PlayStation Direct. There should be a register link on there if you guys scroll around on the website, and that should go and give you guys access. Now, and as well, on the same thing of PlayStation stuff, we want to go and talk about a big uh, interview over here for PlayStation itself. And this is all in regards to PlayStation to broaden their lineup but won't actually thankfully abandon the roots, Studio Chief says. So we have some pretty interesting stuff with this, where Sony PlayStation is diversifying the types of games it makes, but will not neglect its core strength of single-player narrative adventures. PlayStation Studios Chief Herman Holtz tells, tells Axios. So, big thing to note is that they want to keep on focusing on these really, really good single-player narratives, because a lot of folks keep on hearing news on, like, the live action or the live features or life-changing, life-type like style games. Think, like, the Bungie, where there's always something new going on. Think, the like, GTA, new updates all the time, same map, though, same game. Uh, you kind of think of those different types of style of games. Fortnite's a good example, too. Apex, etc., where they're good. They're fun. They have an like, active player base or com competitive community and tournaments or whatever it might be. But a lot of folks love the bread and butter Last of Us, God of War, as you know, Uncharted. All these types are really good single player games. So people are kind of scared because we have a lot more focus in the live service rather than single player. So this is kind of how the interview kind of goes. So why it matters. Winning uh, gaming hardware generations by selling the most consoles is no longer enough for PlayStation. Never should be for any company. While it entered a new console cycle with the 2020 launch of the PlayStation 5, can't believe it's been that long, Sony has also begun expanding into PC and mobile development. What they're saying. We have a history and a reputation for building these incredible narrative-driven single-player games, such as The Last of Us and Horizon in the upcoming God of War Ragnarok, Herman Hull says, chatting via video conference from his office in Amsterdam. The PlayStation Studios head is centrally located to orchestrate expansive efforts, coordinating the work of some 4,000 developers across 19 studios from Japan to California. 
We're also diversifying now, and we have stood up 12 projects in total in the live ops multiplayer space, which that's a big thing. 12 different games of live service games means that if, let's say, it's a sports game, let's say it's like an adventure game, let's say it's like a game like a GTA or Bungie, that means that they're at least offering a wider range of different stuff coming out for folks who want to go and get their consoles and get their games. So they also say live ops or live service games are usually multiplayer and designed for years of post-release content that can generate additional revenue. Live games such as Epic's Fortnite and EA's Apex Legends are among the industry's biggest hits, but Sony has scant successes in the category. I still think Bungie is probably going to be a good one for them with Destiny 2 and other future Destiny games to get into that live service catalog as well, because we really don't have too many live service Sony games. Maybe the Last of Us multiplayer game might chime into it, maybe more multiplayer games, etc. But as of right now, they're developing them and also helping out and developing and buying companies that are working on it, but nothing so far. So as right now, most of Sony's live games haven't been announced yet and are actually deep in development, which is great to hear too. So they'll come from newly recorded teams such as Haven Studio, partners such as Firewalk, and even Sony's internal teams that are best known for single-player games, which I think that does definitely allude towards, say, like The Last of Us, where they have their own individual game. They won't all be original intellectual properties, though, Hull says. We're not exclusively bringing some of our beloved franchises into live games. So traditional PlayStation fans shouldn't fret. This kind of goes out to anyone who's kind of curious in the future of PlayStation and games. The blockbuster single-player narrative games Sony readily wins awards for aren't going away. So what I'm kind of seeing from here from Herman Holst is that it seems like it's they're pushing for, you know, they want to keep the same staple. They want to keep the Horizons. They want to keep the Ratchet and Clanks, God of Wars. But they also want to keep on expanding more. And I think that's smart because what's the actual point of playing all these different types of games when... You could play a cool game like, let's say, Last of Us, and you play it for five days, a few weekends, but then at some point you're going to beat it. And like, you're not going to keep on replaying the same game over and over and over again. You may revisit it over time, but you're kind of good. What you really want to play all the time is games like Call of Duty or Fortnite or Apex, or whatever you guys are playing Overwatch, too. And as you're going through that, it makes sense, because as you're playing through those games, people are like, yeah, I could play this every day for a few months until I get bored or until like a bad update comes out or until a better game comes out. And that's kind of a big thing that Sony needs. Like they have like this, these really good pillars, but they need to go and have like a lot of these type of filler type games where they don't have anything else mixed in that. So thankfully a lot of these, like all the big top developers are still making those games. They're still working on those games and they're still in the pipeline, the studio chief says. Some of our biggest titles in the single player narrative driven spaces are also our most profitable titles too, which is definitely true. We're seeing millions upon millions of sales for a lot of these really big and huge IPs. So Sony is also courting PC and mobile markets. The latter is nearly double consoles in general revenue, uh, according to the research firm Nuzu. So on PC, it actually has released four former PS4 games. And this also kind of expands into like, you know, like a lot of the mobile gaming, PC gaming they were talking about. And these have huge sales. We've had like Days Gone, Horizon, you know, the OG God of War, Spider-Man. And it kind of makes sense, although they do take a little while to come from console, but then they want to keep selling consoles at the end of the day. So mobile's going slower with no titles announced, which is funny, but obvious ambition. Cole says Sony plans to build up its internal capability to make mobile games. We'll work with external partners and were first to recently purchase Savage Game Studio as Sony's first acquisition for its mobile group. Sony may also still make games for the PS4, despite only having PS5 exclusive console games announced beyond 2022. Which I think that also does make sense if it's not too hard to do. I would really like to see developer focus push more on PS5. But at the same time, if let's say you have 1,000 employees, 800 are working on the PS5, and a lot of folks are just used to PS4, and they could kind of bust out a version for it really quick. I mean, why not? There's still a lot of people playing, some people still are having issues with the PS5, so though, if you guys are subscribers to helping folks out there for at least a little while longer. And it kind of, I mean, it kind of makes sense too as well. So we're still seeing PS4 games coming out, we're still seeing PS5 games coming out, mobile games coming out, and they still want to maintain that PC gaming, and as well maintain all the stuff. It's kind of a really nice like kind of checkup update over here. Uh, so but they also don't want to do it for every single game, because they do still love the PS4 users, but they even go in state. We're evaluating on a case-by-case -case basis, so probably not every single future game is going to still have the PS4, but I'm sure for those huge titles, they want to, because if, I mean, if you can still get a few million sales, that's huge, it's probably worth the time, especially if you're already making the game. So Sony's move come as costs rise for creating blockbuster games. Most of the bigger teams have grown in recent years, Holes acknowledges. Bringing titles to PC for additional sales has helped, allows us to continue to invest and invest even deeper in their projects. Although they still have the $7 price tag, which is kind of a lot. <laughs> and the screening of the blockbuster games are made has also apparently been intensified too. Numerous investigative reports about the industry in recent years described overworked developers crunching long hours to an unhealthy degree, including at flagship Sony studio Naughty Dog. 
So I want to look at our professionals as people that can have a balanced long-term careers with proper career progression, which I think is nice. You always want to make sure the devs are good because you don't want them going and bouncing to a different company. Hull says his teams are trying to tackle the issue with nuance. He floated that an experienced art director might decide they want to work at a Saturday, a second Saturday to polish something. Am I going to say no? Well, it's a bit more complex. Because what if his entire team then feels obligated to go in? So what that means is that we need to have a conversation with the art director and say, that's about the game, but there's also your team. So at least they're still trying their best to go make sure they want to make everything non-crunch free and go from there, which I think is always nice to see. So he also has a good little quick thing to wind down. Stan and I want to have a lot more different types of games and cool PSVR 2 games. It's always kind of nice to see these general check-ins too as well. So give me your thoughts and comments down below and as well. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. Giveaway going on down below. You just want to check that stuff on out. We have the Twitter and Twitch too as well. Weeble, Target, Amazon links too. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching in the first place.